the casino. Fun for the whole family. Stay for a while. Stay forever. Did you know, hidden deep in the forgotten realms of the Sims Free Store, a casino can be downloaded if purchased with the Lucky Palms World. All for the price of about £20 worth of Sims points, even in 2024. In this video, we will be gaining all our money from the slots and blackjack at said casino, all whilst raising a growing, if not weird, family. At the end of it, with whatever the money we have left, all moving into whatever house we can afford from the money this family has won. This is a little different to my usual homeless challenges, as usually the Sims remain homeless at the end of the challenge. As always, with homeless challenges, I'm starting out with my favourite Sim, Crunch. This Crunch is Crunch High Roller. These are Crunch High Roller's traits, and he has a fancy cowboy hat. As he is a professional at this, he already has 71,000 and has completed his lifetime wish. But this story isn't 100% about winning the money this time, as he has just become a single father. Thanks to the wishing well that came with this world. Yay! He also has a cat, but the cat can't use the blackjack machine or the slot machine, so it's kind of useless right now. This is the story about Crunch and his growing family, and helping them to gain the best possible house by them all working together, winning money from the slot machines and the blackjack machines. So we begin not at the start of the year, not even at the start of the season, just nearing the end of autumn, because that's how life turns out sometimes. Crunch is taking his hydrophobic son, Dice, to the pool to take a shower after getting his girlfriend pregnant. Crunch's girlfriends, not Dice. Dice is a baby. I have already built a crash on the casino floor so that Dice can sleep safely whilst Crunch either sleeps or uses the slot machines. Don't worry about Dollar the Cat. He spends most of his time hanging out at Crunch's girlfriend's house. Occasionally, she lets him in, which meant I could keep an eye on her and see how her pregnancy was coming along. Ready for Crunch to take her to the hospital to have the baby. But that wasn't for a little while yet. We had only just woohooed. It's difficult being a single father, trying to win enough money for a good life for your infant son. And being electrocuted by a slot machine really doesn't help. You know what does help? Being invited to things. Crunch and Dice headed to a party where it is customary in Homeless Challenge to attend no matter what, as there could be free food and just being inside for a few hours always helps. It was finally winter. I had turned off snow to be more realistic with this world, as it is essentially Las Sims Vegas, or at least in the desert. Crunch unfortunately has a naughty reputation from all the frogs he has kissed and needed to obtain the clean slate reward trait in order for any sim, frog or human, to move in with him. As was my understanding, as I couldn't work out why nobody wanted to move in with Crunch. He had enough reward points from completing his lifetime wish. I just hadn't got it round to it yet. So I got round to it, and invited the two froggy lovers Crunch had once kissed to the casino, so they could help raise dice and win money for the future family home. The froggy lovers were Terra and Donald. Only Terra came to visit Crunch at the casino, but she was more than happy to move in with Crunch and help raise a child with him. 
Now we had three Sims in our household, two of which could win money. Except... Terra hated playing slots and blackjack. Her fun would plummet, and within minutes, she had a stressed moodlet. So I had Terra spend most of her time raising and looking after Dice. I left Dice in the care of Terra and headed over to Naomi's house. Crunch's girlfriend, I don't believe I've said that yet. To see how her pregnancy was coming along. Her pregnancy was actually coming to an end and she had gone into labor. So Crunch rushed her to the hospital and Naomi named the baby Alfonso. And he has the traits, loves the outdoors and friendly. Perfect if we were doing a standard homeless challenge but we are not Alfonso. Sorry. After Alfonso's birth, Crunch really wanted to marry Naomi. Three of his four wants were to marry her. But she went into labor before Crunch could pop the question. So Alfonso, as I had predicted, was not born homeless. And I had to purchase a crib for him to sleep in. Alfonso's first words were telling his father that he was being inappropriate for trying to make his mother a sandwich. Ungrateful child. Back at the casino. And I had forgotten about terror and dice. Terror was in an awful mood, being hungry, smelly, and tired. So we had Crunch tag in so terror could tag out and focus on her moods for a while. Dice was aging up into a toddler today. And because I was convinced teens could play the slots, I had planned to age up Dice once he had completed all the toddler skills. This includes Alfonso when he joins our household. Usually we don't do potty training, but that's usually because we don't have a potty. So I placed a potty down in the casino. Weird, I know, but it wasn't a casino. It was a casino. Yes. Anyway, now that Dice was a toddler, I could, in theory, take Dice with the family to other places in town, as it's less weird to place a toddler on the ground than it is a baby. But that never happened. The family remained shackled to the casino, with Dice enjoying himself in the cage. Naomi was back at the casino now, and Crunch finally popped the question. To celebrate, Crunch won 5,000 simoleons for the family. This would go to the wedding I wanted to go all out for, with even Donald wanting to throw Crunch a bachelor party. The issue was, he wanted to throw it at Crunch's house, and this is our homeless challenge, so it's a no. Why not the casino? It's the perfect place for a bachelor party. Knowing that Donald was finally not at work, we invited him over to move in. I was beginning to get worried that he'd been assigned as a festival vendor. Now if I could get him married to Terra, it could be a double wedding! That never happened. I had placed down the perfect location for Crunch and Naomi to get married at. It was a bonus lot that I got from the Sunlit Tides world. It has massage tables everywhere that Sims seem super obsessed with. Let me know what objects your Sims get obsessed with. Mine is mostly grills and stereos and apparently these massage tables. Crunch and Naomi both headed over to the lot in an attempt to have a wedding under the wedding arches. But if one of them wasn't attempted to be massaged by a stranger, then Alfonso was screaming. So we're doing that? Wasn't he a baby yesterday? So Crunch married Naomi at the lot, but in the less romantic location of the front entranceway. At least they were married now, and that's all that mattered, because Naomi, Alfonso, and her cat Diddy could now move into our family. And what a big family it is now! The chaos could now begin, as this was now an eight-person household, complete with two toddlers and two cats. Days blurred together in between raising children and winning money on the slot machines and blackjack tables. But with three of the four grown-ups, at any time winning money every waking hour. 
their sleep schedules were gone. The money was rolling in. Their moods were constantly a mess as everyone was stressed. Myself included. I haven't played The Sims like this since, well, The Sims 3. But I did manage to keep everybody alive and sane and still gaining money somehow, even if it did take some of them going to a party just to have a short break from their bizarre life. Toddlers don't enjoy sleeping in shifts, unlike adults who tolerate it. So I caved and got another bed for the toddlers so they could sleep and not disturb the other casino goers. The adults, who were tolerating sleeping in shifts, were winning money and teaching toddler skills to the toddlers whenever and wherever they could. At parties, outside, but most of the time at the casino. It was the children's home after all. Naomi was apparently a lot older than Crunch and aged up into an elder, but she was still a caring mother to both Alfonso and Dice, crushing it at the slots and blackjack at the same time. I think she won more money than Crunch overall. But thanks to everybody's hard work, to helping the toddlers gain all their skills, both of them aged up well, and I was able to pick their trait. For Dice, I chose Lucky. It felt like a no-brainer, really. And for Alfonso, I chose Ambitious. He'll be the drive and dedication we'll need one day. Now that they were kids, I was actually going to have them go out and see the rest of the world. Important places, like the pool and the diner. That was it, really. It was Saturday, so the kids could not go to school. And I hadn't put any kids' activity in the casino because I didn't want to. So I had to entertain the kids until Monday, when we would finally be free of them. I mean, they'd get the quality education they deserved. Maybe I should have put them in a boarding school. At least on Sunday, winter turned to spring. Because that's how seasons work, kids. Educational. We ended winter with just under 190,000 simoleons. We could end this challenge now. And I'd love to, I'm so stressed. But I promised a year, so a year it is. Dice enjoyed the cash loads of money the family had in their bank account and seeing the luxurious homes around the neighborhood and soon picked the lifestyle of the rich and famous lifetime wish. He was rich, but he was not famous and definitely did not have the lifestyle. But lifestyle of the rich and famous was doable. Eventually we'd have the lifestyle and becoming famous isn't too hard anyway. Dice and Alfonso were inseparable, mostly because they spent most of their time napping or following a grown-up around because it was past curfew when they were hungry or smelly. I rarely played with them, and if I had, I would have noticed that Dice was actually an imaginary friend sooner. I like that about the wishing well. It didn't just give a random human, it gave an imaginary friend human. But I was stressed out with the family, and they were stressed out with me. So I decided to do something I've always thought about doing in Homeless Challenges, but it just feels a little cheaty. We headed to the fire station. It's not cheating if it's in the game. It has everything they need. A fridge, beds, showers, even a TV. Dice and Alfonso were now well rested for their first day of school, but only one of them showered due to a fight for dominance in the bathroom. Whilst the kids were at school, the grown-ups went out to the bistro to enjoy not being around the kids finally, before settling down to a game of cards back at the casino. This was the first time I'd had a blackjack game with multiple sims involved. They were all playing from the same bank account pot, so it was difficult to see who was doing better than who. Donald did manage to tear himself away from the table to race to the toilet, only to enter and then immediately leave and pee on the floor. On top of that, he'd lost money. The three other adults left the table with another 16,000 simoleons for the family. 
finally felt good to be able to focus on the goal of this video, which was winning money at the casino. I had forgotten about the cats. I'm sorry everybody who was worried about the cats. But one of the cats did age up and the kids had a party for it. Diddy the cat was now an elder cat. The grown-ups had been too concerned with their card game to celebrate a cat's birthday. But at least the kids had fun today. It's not often they get to have fun. Dollar the cat was actually a hunter cat. And once I had discovered that, because I had forgotten about the cats, I'd sent him out hunting to gain all sorts of things for the family. He once found a beetle that sold for over 1,000 simoleons, which is way more money than Terra has ever won us. Even the cats were putting in more work for her. But Terra did have the avant-garde trait, which I wonder is what contributed to her hate of the casino. But with the help of the spray paint kit thing, and when she wasn't taking care of the kiddos, she was just randomly spray painting murals around the casino. Occasionally, opportunities arose from this skill, and Terra gained money from it, which was good, but nothing compared to what she could have gotten if she just liked the slots. On Love Day, Terek took the kids to the park for the festival, but Dice just wanted to sleep on the bench. The music kept him awake, so he was miserable. Alfonso had decided he enjoyed the money the family had, and also wanted to live the lifestyle of the rich and famous. But I didn't want both kids having the same lifetime wish. I wanted Alfonso to come up with his own lifetime wish. Don't copy each other, children. We were so close to the end of this challenge. It had been a stressful one, but a successful one, as we had now over 300,000 simoleons in the household funds. We had the pick of as many houses as we wanted, provided they weren't occupied. Don't know, maybe we could have kicked somebody out. You were rich enough. This house was cool and would have been good with the amount of sims we had living, but we were a family. I didn't want them living all individual lives separately. They've been doing that this whole challenge. It was time for the family to live as one big happy family. And there was only really one choice left. The family spent one final night homeless at the pool before heading over to their forever home, even before Crunch had bought it, and settled in to their new life. Finally, they were no longer homeless and lived in a beautiful home, just down the hill from the favourite bistro they loved. It was a little earlier than the end of the spring season and the start of summer season, because I'd gotten a little confused. But the family loved their new home. The boys shared a room, but that was okay, because they were not only brothers, they were besties. Tara and Donald also shared a room, but not for long. Dice and Alfonso aged up happily together into teenagers. Dice gained the star quality trait because he was going to become famous. And Alfonso gained genius because that's what Naomi wanted. Crunch still frequented the casino as old habits die hard. And in my opinion, it's the best way and easiest way to gain money in The Sims 3. Maybe we'll do another video with eight Sims all playing slots in the casino, trying to gain one million simoleons as fast as possible. In the end, the family finished with 125,000 simoleons and own a home worth over 200,000 simoleons. Overall, a very successful challenge, if not a stressful one. It was also long. I did not intend for it to be this long and split into two videos. But if I hadn't, it would have been even longer, and you would have had to wait way too long. Longer than usual. Check out the first video, if you didn't already. And check out my other video. We play a lot of Sims 3 here, as it's my favourite video game. If you have any other suggestions for other challenges, ideas or games for me to play, let me know in the comments, and subscribe to keep up with those videos. But for now, I have to play Pokemon Red on my Nintendo 3DS. Check out my Ekans. Keep being the blast. Goodbye!